cleansing and all the brother deacons of the diocese, especially the ones that are here, uh, all the people of St. Peter Parish, we offer our consolation and our prayer for support and our great reverence and esteem for this wonderful deacon. I'm glad he did the homily instead of me. <laughs> Not that, you know, I have a big mouth and I like to do that. But anyway, no. Uh, he beautifully covered with great detail why we're celebrating this wonderful man. This deacon, why are we celebrating him today? Especially as a deacon, because he gave you the three visions of the deacon and then illustrated them uh, wonderfully exactly how we did it. Not just did it, but first was it and did it. Namely charity, the second, the word of God, and the third, the altar, the Eucharist. And I thank you for that. I think it was good for all of us in holy orders to hear it. I remember when I came here the first time. That was in early 1996, and there was already a deacon here. You know who that was? Lou, of course. <laughs> and, uh, I didn't know anybody when I came to the Diocese of Lansing. I'm from the Chicago area. I knew nothing, never knew anybody, no geography, nothing. Knew nobody of anything. So every parish I came to, I came, you know. <laughs> anyway, I didn't have to do that here because there, immediately, was this jolly, happy, gentle, smiling man. And it was Lou, Deacon Lou, with the usual, uh, can I help you with anything? Can I do anything for you? And every time I came here, and it was many times the same readings because every year we had confirmation in every parish. So I was here 12 confirmations, plus all the other events that took on. And the first person that was there was, guess who? <laughs> it was Keith Blue. And I remember that. He and I became good buddies. I'll tell you, because we had three things in common. Number one, we were both Catholics. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, was, that was big. That was a good foundation. And we were both in holy orders. Sacrament. He was a deacon and I was a priest. And by God's whatever bishop now. We were those three things. But there was a third thing that we have in common that you would never guess in a million years. Maybe you would guess that. We were both Hoosiers. <laughs> we were originally Hoosiers. So we had that in common. No, I'm not anymore, but uh, most of my life I was. So was he. But he was a real Hoosier. You were Hoosiers too, weren't you? He was a real, genuine, 100% Hoosier because he came from the heart of Indiana, from a place called uh, Zionsville and Lebanon. Those two lights in the middle of the state. So he was the real thing. I was a hybrid. <laughs> I was way up north in that little corner part of the whole metro Chicago in a place called Hammond. Have you ever been there? Yeah. Well, when you leave Hammond, you're in Chicago, but not downtown. But anyway, I would say, I was, uh, I was, I was a, whole, a Chicago Hoosier. <laughs> so, so we did get along fine. I don't want to go into that in great detail. But um, he was always uh, not a sight to see, but a pleasant welcome every time I came here. Now, <coughs> regarding that homily, 
the three wonderful ways you showed who as those three things. The question comes to my mind, and it should come to yours. Why did that happen? How did that happen? Now, with holy orders, I'm still there. I'll be 90. I'm not done yet. I'm not done becoming a priest yet, nor a bishop. I'm never going to be done. Just like you who are husbands and wives and mothers and fathers, you're not done either, ever. You're never done, are you? I'm not done. Are any of you guys done? What you think you are, you're... <laughs> Time. You know, I read, you know, I had a big homily ready. It would have taken a half hour. <laughs> well, there is a lunch, you know. I could go for an hour. <laughs> but here's the point. I want to take you back to his ordination back in the year 1992. Were you there? Were you all there? Who else was, who else was there at that ordination? Were any of you guys there? Okay. I shouldn't call you guys. <laughs> no, I still have all that Chicago talk. Anyway, so anyway, three, four things happen at the beginning of an ordination. Whether it's a deacon, a priest, or a bishop, they're all the same. Four things. To get them ready, not just for that, but for the rest of their lives. And I'm going to remind the deacons here and the priests in Holy York. That's the same with marriage too, but in all different ways, the same thing. The first thing that happens at that ordination, and the bishop is not involved, he just sits there, that's it. And there's a deacon that handles this whole beginning of getting these guys ready. The first thing that is done at the ordination, and the church is filled with capacity, you were all there. Any other was it at the cathedral of Mansing? That's right. So it's full. And uh, that great crowd there represents two a billion Catholics in the world that he's becoming in holy orders to serve the church. And they represent all of them. First thing that happens, the deacon. And I wrote that down somewhere, but I do remember what he says. The deacon says this. It's the first thing that happens. Let those come forward who are called to receive the diaconate in holy orders. Remember that, everybody? The same when you became a priest. Let them come forward. And then what happens? Something very big. And the whole church hears it. Each of their names is called. Out loud. And they heard the name. Louis Urban Weitzel. And a lot of said, oh, who's that? That's him. There were seven of them, by the way, were named that day. Seven. And the name was called. So the church, not just there, but the whole world, and eventually St. Rita's Parish. You've heard this name ever since. His name was called. What did he do? He did a number of things that he's going to do the rest of his life and that brought it to its fullness everything Deacon Chris said. Right? What did he do? He stood up. He rose. They were all seated everywhere. He rose up. He stood up. As if to say in the scriptures, Here I am, Lord. I'm ready. I want it. I love it. It's me. He didn't say all that. I made all that up. <laughs> but he stood up. He stood up, stood up the next 27 years, doesn't he? Oh well, yeah, he did. You know, he wasn't me and all that puke. No, he stood up <laughs> and he said something, something that he has said the rest of his life, and he said it every day of his life as a deacon. He said, "Present." Then, and he's been present ever since. He's been present for you, hasn't he? Just like you just said. The priests have been present. Present. You have to be present. That means to be with it. And to be for them. He said present. That's not all. He 
these things, he rose up and he said, President, priests and bishops and deacons are called to do that for the rest of their life every day. Is that right, everybody? Yes. Yes. Same with people who make marriage vows. Same thing. There's a third thing that happens that's very big. Because he's still out there somewhere. He stood up and said, present. And then he did the next thing that was required. Because the bishop's sitting out there, and he's going to ordain him. With the praise of the Holy Spirit. To be back here somewhere. He, he has rose up, and he has said, present. And then, boy, he's going to do this the rest of his life. And he sure did this here at St. Rita's, huh? He came forward. You know, he came forward. Yeah. And then he was ordained a deacon. That's why you love him. That's why you celebrate him. That's why we all respect him. And we respect all of those in holy orders who, who follow through on that present, standing up, present, and coming forward. Never stops. The same with husbands and wives or teachers, lawyers, doctors. You have to keep coming forward, don't you? And not be. <laughs> and all that sort of thing. That's why I'm glad to be here and to say these things because they're true. They're true. That was the very start. And he he was wide open with that being present in the name of the one who called him Christ himself. So I thank you for, for inviting me, and I'll miss him too. Uh, but anyway, God bless you, and you know, I, I could go on, but I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> <laughs>